Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your boy E here, Eric Rodriguez, every Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Talk about all things professional wrestling. Talk about WWE. A lot of the times, not going to, you know, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to, you know, feed you guys a, a web of lies. But, uh, you know, WWE, AEW, Ring of Honor, New Japan Professional Wrestling, TNA. Stardom sometimes, Major League Wrestling a little bit of the time, the National Wrestling Alliance. You know, I, we're, you know, it's gonna get better. You know, a thousand ten percent. I really, you know, I wish I could watch all the shows. I'd be badass. But you know, then you gotta, you know, more subscriptions. And I, if you're anything like me, you're kind of like one of those guys that like, uh, or you know, girl or whatever, where you know you kind of scroll, you're kind of scrolling through your phone. You get this notification from your bank and be like, oh, so and so. You know, it took ten ninety nine out of your, you know, out of your bank account. You're like, what? Like, what? what are you serious right now? But you pop it open, you're like, oh my god, I'm still subscribed to that. I feel like I, I don't know. I really have like so many subscriptions that I'm like trying to, you know, kind of deal with. I do watch highlights. I do watch a lot of highlights, and I, I like Ring of Honor. I definitely, I love TNA. I think TNA is pretty awesome. Definitely one of the companies that are under the radar. But uh, yeah. So uh, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast. We have a great show for you today on tap. We're going to talk about AEW Dynamite. We're going to talk about my Thursday night wrestling preview. Uh, take your hand with Eric. Step into the ring of uh, TNA Impact and also Ring of Honor. And then we're going to talk about um, how the how NXT and TNA are you know heading toward a promising mutual benefiting relationship and we're going to dig into that for a third segment segment number four we're going to talk about um blood we're going to talk about some blood in professional wrestling why wrestling promotions kind of do it why it's been done in the past and why it's you know do you have wwe heading toward netflix obviously the pg error might be over heading to like a pg-13 and other wrestling, other wrestling promotions like AEW, TNA, Ring of Honor, New Japan Professional, they all do it. They all do it. So we're going to talk about why exactly, um, you know, they kind of push those barriers to kind of have blood within the wrestling promotions. And our fifth and final segment, we have our uh, we have our Thursdays Superstar Spotlight. We're going to talk about All Ego, the NXT World Heavyweight Champion, Ethan Page. But, but before we get into that, I want to remind you guys to use the tips and donations link at the gsmcpodcast.net. Shoot me your comments, questions, and concerns. Tell me, you know, basically all your wrestling predictions. Give me all your wrestling thoughts. Give me, um, you know, just you uh, people you want to see have the title. Give me a shout out where you're listening from. Um, there's no right or wrong answers, obviously, in the world of professional wrestling. A little bit of ambiguity ultimately makes for a better show so you know thousand and ten percent don't be shy hit up the chat if you could donate that'd be cool not really necessary but you know be part of the show it's going to be awesome thousand and ten percent the show is all about you guys the fans and once again the link is at the gsmc podcast dot men all right so we have segment one we're going to talk about aew dynamite it was pretty good you know i feel like i said that within like Every like AEW Dynamite like episode I end up reviewing and stuff like that. So no, all in all, I feel like it was a pretty awesome episode. You saw the you know you saw the promotion start off with Will Osprey come out to address uh, to address the crowd. A lot of people kind of got a little bad vibes, you know. When I kind of saw him walk out there in like a somber moon, I was like, dude, like poor Will. Will Osprey, he was so close to beating uh, Swerve Strickland for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship, obviously uh, to no avail. But then. Um, you know, and the whole challenge by MJF, it was, you know, called him a, li a little, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure if I can say that on this uh, PG error of, uh, you know, podcasting that I got here. But <laughs> and then um, he also said, hey, I will see you next week. B word. Bam. Oh, I wish I could say it because when you say it, it just establishes such a huge like like an ambiance, like a, like a feeling like a like a single word could like change your mood change your emotions get you invested into something that like you're like oh i'm not sure if i was really interested in that before then and then um will osprey is going to take on mjf next week for the aew international championship should be pretty awesome i don't know if they're so you know gung-ho about giving the title to mjf so early 
I see this match. Obviously, it's going to be interrupted. Obviously, there's going to be some foul play. You're going to see Daniel Garcia getting his own, finding a way to kind of build up that, you know, just because he's going, just because Daniel Garcia is going to interfere in this match doesn't necessarily mean that it was like, oh, AEW can't really put on a, you know, a good AEW uh, international championship match. No, I don't think that at all. I think this is going to be a great way to screw over MJF. MJF attacked and demised, demolished, freaking victimized Daniel Garcia on Dynamite last week. So now Daniel Garcia is going to have his revenge. And this ultimately, you know, brings up for a better uh, AEW all in because I don't know who Will Ospreay will take on for the AEW International Championship. I know they are having a number one contenders match next week on Dynamite, I believe, or it might be on Rampage. Don't quote me on that. But um, it's just all building up. It's all building up toward a AEW all in at Wembley Stadium in England. MJF obviously still has a lot to prove. Um, not so much because, you know, I feel like the company really does have their back on superstars like MJF, Swerve Strickland, um, Will Ospreay, also in the women's division, uh, Mercedes Monet, and also uh, Timeless Tony Storm. And um, as a wrestling promotion, I feel like they've done a good job for that. But ever since MJF came back, I was like, you know, I kind of feel bad for the dude because he has to come out and have to cut a flawless promo every single time because they're kind of fighting for ratings. They're also fighting for um, just people to come out, buy ticket sales, also marketing, merchandising, and stuff like that. It, it's it all, you know, it all comes under one umbrella. You know what I mean? It all comes full circle. And I feel like um, I don't know, MJF and Will Ospreay face to face on Dynamite. It's a good, it's a great start. It's a great start. It's gonna be awesome. All right, moving on. We have the men's Owen Hart Cup final. We had Brian Danielson take on Hangman Adam Page. Um, this match was really good. A lot of back and forth for the longest time. You had hangman kind of victimizing Brian kind of targeting that bad neck to the point where everybody was like, Oh no, like it's, this is going to be the end of Brian Danielson. You know, one, you know, kind of that, you know, that, that hero role that they like to put the baby faces inside. And I feel like Dan, uh, Brian Danielson was in that card. A thousand and ten percent hangman Adam page came back. He, uh, he lost the match. Brian Danielson won. He is uh, Brian, uh, Brian Danielson has won the men's Owen Hart Owen Hart Cup final and will challenge AEW World Heavyweight Champions for Strickland at All In Wembley Stadium. I like it. I like it. I think that's going to be a great main event. Once again, for Strickland is put in a spot where he has to face one of the company's best. Um, I think it's good for him, but once again. Every single match I've watched for Strickland fight in, it's always been up in the air. It's always been, you know, unpredictable. I'm like, oh, I don't honestly, I don't know what's going to happen next. A lot of the other titles, you're like, okay, I kind of, you know, got an idea of how it's going to end. You know what I mean? But the way they're handling the AEW World Championship, uh, the AEW Creative, I feel like it's, uh, you know, pretty good, pretty good. So, uh, yeah, then you saw Swerve Strickland come out. Swerve announces, um, you know, that at Blood and Guts, he will lead Team TNA. And then he will take care of Brian Danielson at AEW All In, one of the most important pay per views uh, in all elite wrestling. But so now you have Mark Briscoe. You also have uh, the AEW World Heavyweight Champion Swerve Strickland at Blood and Guts. If you guys don't know what Blood and Guts is, it's going to be like a like an NXT kind of war games. You have two rings side by side, co uh, covered by one cage. They should do a triple cage. That'd be pretty badass. That'd be so like. That's so WCW stardom, but, you know, I think that's Starcade. I think they're badass. Um, all right, next we have Samoa Joe taking on Chris Jericho in a street fight. And it wasn't, I don't think it was mentioned that it was for the FTW Championship. So I was like, all right, but, you know, when you kind of see something like that, as a wrestling fan, you're like, you know what? I don't think this match is really going to hold that much, you know. I don't know how to explain it. Like that much like it stands out you know what i mean like i knew it was gonna end with like something bad happening either a huge brawl uh when when hook and shibata comes out to protect samoa joe or you have the learning tree big bill and the bad apple of uh, brian keith but you saw the match end they stopped the match after chris jericho lifted uh samoa joe on a uh, on a forklift drove him through many many walls it was about two or three and he was done. He was down. He was down and out. It was kind of crazy to kind of see Samoa Joe in that kind of position. And then after 
you saw the ambulance take uh, some of Joe away. Then you had uh, Chris Jericho be like, bye guys. Like, you know what I mean? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he's kind of heading for like this, um, you know, maybe this heel turn, maybe like this six sadistic person, you know, kind of relating to like Bray Wyatt. Maybe that could be the case. That would be, you know, a whole different character change for Chris Jericho is kind of in need right now, especially at his age, especially how long he's been with the wrestling organization. You know, obviously he was with WW, uh, WWF and WCW beforehand. So it's like, I feel like we already kind of know who Chris Jericho is, but I feel like a, just like a huge character makeover would ultimately put AEW over. And uh, yeah, honestly, it would be for the thousand and ten percent. It's kind of crazy. All right, next we have the number one contenders match for the AEW International Championship. You saw Kyle Fletcher taking on um uh Tomo Tomo Shiro. Sorry, don't don't you know don't don't judge me. Ishii, um Claudio Castagnoli and uh, the Bastard Pack. After all, it was set and done. Although it was a great match, and I honestly kind of thought it would have been cool for Kyle Fletcher to win and kind of take on his protege, you know, kind of like a Mariah May, kind of like a timeless Tony Storm. Kyle Fletcher's pro- protege, you know, in the Don Callis family was Will Ospreay. So, yeah, I don't know. It just would have been, you know, it would have been pretty awesome to kind of see those guys go face to face. But instead, you have the Bastard Pack winning. He's going to fight whoever wins out of MJF and um, and uh, Will Ospreay on Dynamite in two weeks. So, pretty awesome. Not bad. All right, next we have the CEO's um, Mercedes Monet cele- uh, celebrations once again. You know, Britt Bra- Brit Bra- Baker shows up and, um, you know, she's just, you know, DMD, DMD. No, no, like, Britt is, like, so over with the fans right now. She's absolutely over with the fans right now. The fans love her. It's to the point where, like, when she came out, when she came back, you kind of have to put Mercedes Monet in that, you know, in that heel kind of role. But you've kind of seen her reference uh, the elite. Sorry, excuse me. It's, you know, sweating. We're kind of crazy. You kind of see her like referencing the elite, you know, seeing that you guys are like buddy, buddy, showing that Mercedes Monet is kind of heading toward a heel run. But, you know, with the with Matthew Nicholas Jackson on your side, you know, obviously you have a little edge there. So, you know, uh, you're going to see Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet fight in the future. Obviously not at uh, Wembley Stadium, which is, you know, kind of crazy, kind of crazy. Maybe she takes on like Mariah May. For uh, for uh, for her number one contenders match, that would be pretty awesome. That'd be kind of crazy, but you know, you will not. Mar- oh, no, oh my God, she's taking on the. Yeah, no, I just uh, I just solved my own riddle here. So we have Mariah May taking on Tony Storm, and then you have Mercedes Monet taking on uh, Britt Baker for the um, TBS Championship at All In. Dang, that kind of worked all out. That's kind of cool. So then you saw Darby Darby Allen once again is backstage. I don't know if he's cleared yet by AEW. Uh, medical professionals but you know it was kind of cool to see him back there i was you know i'm a huge fan of darby allen as soon as i started watching aew i was like dude this guy's sick definitely love this guy and um but yeah and the last match uh lastly from aew dynamite we have the women's own heart cup uh championship match you have uh willow of nightingale comes out she was um you know representing owen hart wearing the wearing the power the you know the what is it the whopper i think it is or the you know the get up or whatever then you have mariah may coming out with uh her protege timeless tony storm it was cool it was pretty cool like it built up a lot of you know a lot of possibilities a lot of unpredictability i thought this match was going to end a little bit differently obviously but then at you know you saw chris statlander get involved which i knew was gonna happen so you'll probably see a match between her and willow of nightingale at uh, AEW uh, Wembley Stadium. But then you saw Mariah May win. Mariah May, she's been, you know, training under timeless Tony Storm for the longest time. She's learned a lot from her, obviously. The way she cut that promo was like, how could you be mad at me, Tony? You're the one who taught me to be this way. Like, you know what I mean? So at the end of the match, you saw Mariah May and Tony Storm hand in hand running up to the Owen Hart Cup uh, trophy. And then uh, Mariah May grabs the belt just absolutely impales it into Tony Storm's face. Tony Storm is busted open. There's blood everywhere. She grabs her high heel, grabs the heel of the high heel, sticks it in that open wound. You just see blood gushing out of timeless Tony Storm. It, that's, it was crazy. It was, you know, 
a lot of action, a lot of blood. I, you know, if you were just a casual viewer of wrestling, you probably flicked on that channel. You saw this, you know, a beautiful woman like, you know, Tony Storm. You see blood gushing down. You just, you stop. You're like, oh, sh like, what's happening right here? And then, you know, that's why blood is, you know, kind of important within professional wrestling. And we're going to talk about it within our third segment. So make sure you do not go anywhere. All right. So, you know, that was my AEW Dynamite review. It was pretty dope, pretty cool. And now we're going to jump on into Eric's Thursday Night Wrestling preview. We're going to talk about TNA Impact. And we're also going to talk about Ring of Honor. So, hey, stay where you are. Grab your favorite drink. Grab your favorite snack and get ready for some more GSMC wrestling content. 